Hello, and welcome to a demonstration of Topaz Simplify. Topaz Simplify is a powerful image processing filter that works both with the PC and the Mac. For a complete list of products that Topaz Simplify works with, please visit our website at www.topazlabs.com. Topaz Simplify allows you to effortlessly convert photos into works of art. Here is a photo of a church that has been converted into a uh, pencil sketch. Uh, here's an example of uh, the Eiffel Tower that has been magically transformed into this psychedelic work of art. Topaz Simplify is a very simple image processing filter that is based on a new trend in image processing called morphological or scale space operators. Now in this demonstration we're going to mainly concentrate on two images. The first one is going to be the conversion of this Ferrari photo into this line drawing and the next one will be the conversion of this photo of the fall into this watercolor painting. So let's get started. Here we are in Photoshop. Now you'll probably notice that I've already placed uh, these small circles of changing radius in the lower left hand corner. Now that's going to really help us show you exactly how Topaz Simplify works. So to activate Topaz Simplify, under Filter, simply pull down to Topaz Labs and choose Topaz Simplify. Now you're going to notice that this is the basic interface of Topaz Simplify and we're going to go through um, every feature that's here. Starting from the lower left hand corner, you'll probably notice that it says that the preview mode is currently on approximate. That's because we are looking at this image at actually fitting onto the screen. Now if you notice that if I click on the 100% button, now preview mode shows that it is accurate, which means that anything that we do to the image, let's say for example if we double click on a, a preset over here, uh, this is going to be the most accurate representation of this effect. Now as we continue to move across the line here, the output currently shows that it's on a combined image. If I clicked on base image, you can see that Topaz Simplify is based based on the combination of two image processing operators. The base image is the details that have been removed from our main image to give us a very simplified version of our photo. Right next to the base image we could see there's edges and this is the edge detection deck technology that Topaz Simplify has that generates the line drawings that can then be superimposed on top of the base image to create the final combined image. Please note that when you choose OK for your final effect either your base image choice or your edges choice will actually be will be the final output into Photoshop. So as we have seen from the lower area of our user interface, notice that we can zoom in and work on a tighter area or of course zoom out. We can fit the entire drawing into our uh, work area and um, or we can go back to 100% so that we can see a one-to-one -one representation of our image. Now Topaz Simplify's uh, window, just like any other window uh, from Topaz Labs, can be moved and can also be resized as well as maximize so that we can fill the entire screen with our user interface. Now as we look along the right hand side, OK of course is going to uh, commit our final changes, cancel will cancel us back into Photoshop, help will take us to the Topaz Labs website where we can learn a little bit more about how exactly Topaz Simplify works. Enable pop-up help on each item. When you turn this on, and when you put your cursor on any one of these sliders, you'll notice there's a little pop-up bubble that tells you exactly what these sliders do. Now I'm gonna, for this demonstration, I'm gonna leave that off. Now view original image is pretty self-explanatory. When you uh, hold it down, you can see the original image that you had started from, and when you let up on it, it goes back to your affected image. Pan faster, when it's on, it allows you to more quickly go through, go from one side of the image to the other, and when you turn it off, it's going to act a little bit more like the traditional hand tool that you have in Photoshop. And again, for this demo, I'm gonna go ahead and leave that on. Share is a wonderful feature that allows you to take the settings that you have created here in Topaz Simplify and to copy that to the clipboard. So you can, you can now upload this to a website or maybe you want to email this to a friend. So this is a wonderful way to take some of the settings that you've worked on and pass it along to some of the other users of Topaz Simplify. And then finally, Reset All is going to reset everything back to its default position.
Now that we've seen um, some of the basic user interface options, let's now start with the tabs. The Topaz Simplify user interface has been designed to be used from left to right. So we're going to start here with presets. Here you'll see a list of pre-made presets that we already give you, and you can either double click on a preset to see what the effect is going to be like here on the screen, or you can just select the preset and click on Apply Preset, which does exactly the same thing. Um, Right underneath Apply Preset uh, is Save As, which allows you to take a preset that you've already created and to save it as a new file here. And then finally, the Delete button here, which will allow you to just to delete whatever presets you don't need out of the list. So the Presets tab is pretty self-explanatory, and we've really strived to give you some pretty stunning effects right here in the Presets section. So now that we've seen uh, the presets, I'm going to go ahead and reset everything. So we start from scratch, and now we're going to dive into the real guts of Topaz Simplify. When you choose the Simplify tab, you'll notice that the first and most important slider says Simplify Size. As I manipulate this, I want you to notice the circles that we have placed here in the lower left-hand corner of the image. Like uh, you probably remember, I said that Topaz Simplify is all based on the sizes of features. You can see that right now I'm slowly moving the slider here to the right and you're noticing how the circles that we had of various radiuses are slowly disappearing. As I continue to do that, you'll see that features that are in the image just slowly start to go away. Now, as I've done this, not only are the circles disappearing here, but when you look actually at the Ferrari image itself, you can see that, for example, where we had the headlight of the Ferrari has now magically disappeared. Also, when you look at the Ferrari logo itself and underneath it where it says FXX, okay, suddenly because those features were smaller than our simplify size, those features have disappeared as well. So, um, in this demonstration, I'm going to bring that down just a little bit, but then right underneath Simplify Size is Feature Boost. This is probably the slider that you're going to be using most often when you want to create an oil painting effect or a watercolor effect. It is going to be like a sharpening operator on the Simplify Size image, image that you have just created. So as I continuously move Feature Boost here to the right, okay, you'll notice that we start getting somewhat of a, a banding effect, which almost looks like a painter has a applied brush strokes onto the canvas. And also, if you look to the left, you can see that sometimes you even get some new colors that get introduced into the image. Now, for a certain paint effect, this might be exactly what you're looking for. Other times, these extra colors might not be what you were you know, after. And that's why, under color space, you can go from RGB to YCBCR, which means that now Topaz Simplify is going to work in the YCBCR color space, and some of these uh, extra colors will just disappear. And most likely, you're going to use the color space operator along with Feature Boost to get exactly the effect that you want. Now, for this demonstration, I'm going to go back to just the RGB processing, and I'll take the Feature Boost all the way down to zero. Now, let's go look at some of these circles again. As you can see, as we continuously move these sliders to the right, more and more of our circles are beginning to disappear. Now, I'm going to go uh, a little bit further until I get um, most of the small circles have completely disappeared out of view. Now, as you are trying to create a work of art, taking features away is one part of the spectrum. Right next to Simplify Size is these group of sliders over here that help you bring back some of the small details that you just took away. First, we're going to start out with Detail Strength. I'm going to move that up to approximately 1 right here. Now you can see that some of the smaller details that we had just removed using Simplify Size have crept back into our image. Details Boost will allow you to take some of these features and to amplify them even further. And we're going to talk a little bit more about Details Boost in just a second. And then finally, Detail Size works exactly like Simplify Size did, in that it allows you to take different sizes of details and introduce them into the image. Right now, for example, you'll notice that I've chosen a detail size of about 0.13. And you can see these smaller size dots have now been reintroduced into the image. And I'm going to move that up a little bit more because as I continue to move this up, you'll look into the photo over here and you can see that details like the mechanical details here in the front of the car and the Ferrari logo are beginning to appear. Okay, now let's say I continue to move this up until I get even the FXX down there to appear as well. 
So now if we look at the circles, we'll probably notice that there are certain size of circles that we have introduced back into the photo while still there's another entire set of sizes that we have eliminated. So using simplify size and detail size, we can isolate exactly the details that we want in the image and the details that we want to eliminate from the image. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and uh, reset all. So let's press on the reset all button so we can go back to the beginning and let's talk a little bit about details boost. Now first uh, I'm going to start out by bringing up simplify size. Okay, And as we keep doing this you can see that uh, the different size circles start to disappear. And now we want to reintroduce some of these uh, size circles back in. But this time I want you to pay attention to some of the fainter circles that we had drawn along the side there. Now before I continue, I'm also going to take what says remove weak and bring that all the way down to zero. So uh, we'll talk a little, bit, a little bit more about remove small or remove weak here in just a moment. But as we bring up detail strength, I'm going to bring it up to about a level of one. Okay, so we can see some of the sizes start to appear. And I'm going to bring up the detail size so we can see some of these smaller circles that were very faint appear as well. Now this is where details of boost comes into play. You have to remember that there's going to be sometimes certain features in your image that were very faint in the original image that you want to be able to boost. Now this is where detail boost really comes into handy. As I keep bringing details boost higher, please pay attention to these faint circles. I'm going to keep going higher and higher and higher and you'll see that we're really, really amplifying some of these features. Please remember that in the original image, these circles were very faint. Whereas now, because we've used do detail boost and we've really cranked that up, we have now brought up uh, the intensity of some of these fainter features. And this will have a very interesting effect on your art because it'll take some of these faint details and will really, really amplify them. And as you can see here from the gravel pattern and some of the other highlights that are here on the Ferrari. Now, for this example, um, one of the other things that we also want to do is we're going to finish off the explanation of Simplify by looking at Remove Small and Remove Weak. Let's take uh, the details boost back down to a value of 1 or approximately 1. And please remember that at any time you can go into um, any one of these uh, variables and type in whatever number you're interested in. So in this case I'll just type in 1.0 over here and for detail strength I'll type in 1.0 as well. Okay, so you can be very, very exact with what you want to type in. Remove small is a great way of taking certain features after you have used simplify size and a combination of detail size and just getting rid of some of these smaller sizes that are still hanging around. You can see that it is going to work in conjunction with simplify size. You notice as I start bringing that up how some of the smaller circles start to disappear. And the same thing uh, applies for remove weak. Okay, you can see that as I brought remove weak up, some of the details that we had here originally with these circles that were fainter, as we brought the remove weak higher, some of those dis details just disappeared. So a combination of all of these sliders here under the simplify tab will give you exactly the simplified look that you're trying to create using the simplifies tab. Now in this example, what we're going to do is from simplify, we're going to move over to the adjust tab because I want to create a, a black black and white line drawing. So for black and white, under adjust, you'll find the traditional brightness, contrast, and saturation controls. And there's this one last control that's called saturation boost that we will explain at the end of this demonstration. So for this example, let's just bring saturation all the way down to zero so we have a, a black and white image. We're going to go back to simplify and I'll fit the entire image onto the screen so I can see every corner of what I'm doing. Uh, I'll reset everything, bring simplify size quite a bit higher. So we're going to throw away many, many of the features here of the image. And that looks actually pretty good right there. Remember, the effect that I'm going for right now is going to be an effect very similar to an artist using a marker to mark in some of the shadings of the image. And it seems like there's a little too much shading going on. So under Adjust, I'll bring up the brightness. OK, there we go. That looks good. And um, let's take a look at the, the patterns that we have on the windows. That looks great. Let's also look at the road that we have here too. It looks exactly what I was going for, which was um, somewhat of a, a marker effect, where the white areas is going to represent just the paper, and the, um, the grayer areas are going to be where uh, the artist has applied a marker.
some contrast. We'll increase it so we can get some darker features happening. And um, I'm pretty pleased with this. The last thing I'm going to do is there's a little bit of detail that's showing up here from um, the mechanical details that were in the original photo. So let's get rid of those also with simplify size. Okay, that looks great. So now that we have uh, created our base image, it's now time to move from the Simplify and the Adjust tab over to Edges. Please note, the reason why Adjust is the tab immediately to the right of Simplify is because the Adjust operator is going to be operating on the image that you have created under the Simplify tab, meaning that Adjust will not be adjusting what we're going to create next, which is going to be for the edges. So that's one of the reasons why Simplify and Adjust have been placed together here. So now it's time to move on to edges. Now the first thing you'll notice is when you go into edges is the output is now set on the edges, and there's nothing on the screen. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to take every one of these sliders and bring that down to zero. Even Simplify Edge, bring that down to zero. And it's time for us to bring up the edge strength. Immediately, you'll notice how uh, the computer is showing us edges that it's finding on the image. In this case, the mode for the edge type is color edge normal. If you open this up, you'll notice that we have eight different ways of edge detection. Color edge normal, color edge fine, color line normal, color line fine, and the analogy of these four modes also exists in the mono modes, which is for black and white lines. Mono edge normal, mono edge fine, mono line normal, and mono line fine. So we're starting out here with color edge normal, and we're going to crank this up all the way. And you can see the problem that we have is that the computer is finding way too many edges. The secret of effective edge detection is to keep the edges that you want and to throw away the edges that are ex excessive. Uh, let's take a look at actually each one of these uh, line detection modes in turn. Color edge normal is used so that you can create color lines. And this is wonderful for effects where you actually need colored lines to appear. Color Edge Fine is very similar to Color Edge Normal, but it's going to generate finer lines. As you can see, the lines are just inherently thinner. Then right underneath it, we have Color Line Normal, um, where the edges seem to be all of uniform width. Uh, please notice that as you look at some of these edges, the thickness of the lines seems to be uniform all the way across. Whereas in contrast, when we were in, for example, color edge normal, some of these lines seem to be thicker and some of the other lines seem to be thinner. So that's why you might want to use uh, options like color line normal or color line fine. Color line fine is just like color line normal, just that it produces much, much finer effects for the lines. So let's go back and uh, actually finish off what we were working on, which is mono edge fine. And uh, as we said before, we're going to start out with all these sliders set to zero so that you can see that the computer is finding way too many lines. Now, Right underneath Edge Strength, you're going to find Simplify Edge. Simplify Edge works exactly the same way that Simplify Size did under the uh, Base Image tab. Let's go back to our edges, and what that means is Simplify Edge, as you bring that up, the computer now is getting rid of certain size details. And in fact, as I bring that up further and further, you can see here from the circles that the smaller size circles are beginning to disappear. And the edges are only being found around the largest size circles. Okay, now remember we said that we wanted to um, hold, hang on to the lines that we want and to get rid of the lines that we don't need. Now, as I've brought this uh, Simplify Edge further, I really wanted the Ferrari logo and it looks like I got that, but the uh, a little bit of this uh, mechanical features, I'm going to ease up on that just a little bit so I get a little more of that. But then we notice all the other lines that are just hanging around. Now this is where Reduce Weak and Reduce Small come into play. First, we'll use Reduce Weak. As we bring that up, you're going to notice that some of the smaller lines or the weaker lines just, just start magically to disappear. And this is a great way of throwing away some of these excessive lines. Now, as I keep going up, I noticed how some of these lines that I really wanted in the image are beginning to come back in. So let me ease off on that just a tad so I can get some of these uh, features coming back into my photo. And I'll keep panning around. Uh, and it looks like I'm um, pretty good with the way that things are right now. 
Now, as the last uh, step, I noticed that there are some lines that are smaller that are left behind on the image from the reflections, from the windshield, um, just general lines. And this is where we're going to finish things with Reduce Small. So let's bring up Reduce Small, and you'll be able to see some of these smaller details just slowly begin to disappear. I like some of these lines over here. We don't need those anymore. So uh, let's bring up Reduce Small along with Reduce Weak. Okay, that looks good. Let's bring Simplify Edge down just a tad so that we can get some of these other features to come back in and bring up Reduce Small. As you can see, just by you know small incrementations of these sliders, okay, you're going to get exactly the effect that you were going after. Okay, as I continue to go around the image, it looks like I got my uh, uh, logo here in the back. The line art looks really beautiful. We're getting exactly the lines and the edges that we needed. And I'm going to go ahead and stay with it. Now, the last slider on this list is Fatten Edge. These edges right now have a thickness of anywhere between about one pixel to about two pixels. But you can use Fatten Edge to really, really make those lines thicker. So as you can see, we're thickening up these lines. But for this demonstration, I want to create just really fine lines. We'll let that stay at zero. Finally, the last uh, toggle over here is Inverse Edge Color. And if you click on it, it's just going to invert the entire image. So instead of giving you black lines against white, now we have white lines against black. OK, so we have the uh, line image that we like. And as you can see, we are currently looking at the edges. And if I want to see the final effect, I can click on Combine Image. Remember, what we're looking at now is the edges combined with the base image, which is this one over here, to create our final combined image. And let's take a look at that 100% to see if uh, this is the effect I want. Yeah, that looks great. I think I'm going to go ahead and stick with that one. So let's go ahead and hit OK and see our results here in Photoshop. Ta-da! Here's our final effect, and let me uh, just get rid of our user interface over here and show that to you one-to-one. -one. There it is. So now we've seen uh, a great example of how you can use Topaz Simplify to create a line effect. Now let's move on to our fall image. There we go. Our fall original photograph looks something like this. And as before, we'll go to Filter, Topaz Labs, Topaz Simplify. Let's reset everything so we're starting completely from scratch. And since I've already explained what all of these different sliders uh, do, I'm going to go through this tutorial a little bit faster than what we did the last time. Um, first, we're going to move into Simplify. And I know that I want to create a watercolor effect. So uh, immediately, I want to throw away most of the finer details that are on this image just by simply cranking up Simplify Size. And you can see that just with Simplify Size alone, you get pretty close to the final effect that you want. That all these little details that were the veins and uh, the other high frequency details that were in the image have just dropped out. Okay? And it's leaving you with this really beautiful uh, painterly effect right now. Uh, as we're doing this, I think that this is a little too much. This effect is too high. Um, what I'm going to do also to add to the artistic effect of this is bring up Feature Boost. And you're going to see how some of the colors start becoming more vibrant. And it seems as if uh, a painter has applied, applied brush strokes now across this canvas. Now, as we look at some of the details that were here down at the bottom, you could see that in the original image, we had all these small leaves that were hanging around that were just floating on the surface of the water. But because of Simplify Size and those leaves being smaller than our Simplify Size, that has, those leaves have just disappeared. Um, overall, as I'm panning around this image, I'm actually very pleased with this effect that we have right now. But there is one thing that I'm missing in this image, and that is some of the finer details that were um, the actual tiny veins of the leaves that I like to reintroduce into our image. And the way we're going to do that is we'll bring up the detail strength. You know, we could see that these details start coming, kind of creeping back in, but I'm interested in just those little, little leaves, you know, just the tiny, tiny, tiny details. So I will bring up the detail size up slightly. And then finally, uh, as we bring up the detail size, you can see that some of these smaller dots start coming into the image too. And this is where we're going to use Remove Small and Remove Weak to get rid of all of these 
uh, small specks that are appearing across our image. Okay, let's actually bring that up all the way so all these smaller details have just disappeared. Let's take a look at our final effect here, uh, make it fit onto the screen. And feature boost is a little too high. Let me just bring that back down a little bit. Okay, that looks great. I'm going to go ahead and stay with uh, this effect here. Now, uh, after we have created the general brush strokes for our image, it's time to move on to the Adjust tab. Okay, this is where we're going to do our color manipulation. And this is also where I'm going to introduce to you the saturation boost that I promised I would show you the last time. Now, uh, saturation is going to work just like any other saturation feature would uh, in any other paint program. As you bring it up, as you can see, the saturation generally of the image goes higher, which means that we're just boosting the colors in general. But let's take a look at saturation boost. I'm going to take all these variables back down to their reset position. And we're going to look at the areas here that have a very, very small amount of saturation. And mainly, we're talking about these gray areas here that are on the water. Let's bring up saturation boost. Now, watch what happens. Okay, you can see that even the things that had the slightest amount of color now have a tremendous amount of color. Now, uh, as we do this, we're really, really bringing up the color in the slightest areas. Saturation boost is actually like a gamma operator on your, on your color channel. And it's a wonderful way of br bringing out all of the hidden colors in your photos. The same way that we can use saturation boost to increase saturation, you notice that these variables start with 1 and go up, which means every time you can see that you can take a slider and move it down, that means that there's some extra effects waiting for you there. So let's take saturation boost right now and bring it all the way down to point 2. Now watch what has happened on the image as I fit it. You can see that the areas that had very little saturation have now become black and white. But the areas that actually had a little more color actually have those colors hanging still around in them. Now, this is a great way of isolating the things that were more colorful. For example, if you were working on a face, if you wanted uh, the lipstick on the lips just to have color, literally by using saturation and saturation boost, you can just bring out the colors of the lips and let everything else in the photo be black and white. In fact, I really like the way that this effect is looking right now. Uh, I'm going to go back to looking at it 100%, look at the water, and I like that black and white, but let me just bring that up just a little bit more so we can introduce a few more colors in there. And I'm pretty pleased with that. So finally, uh, let's go on to edges. We'll make it all fit onto the screen. And for the edges, I'm just going to apply a little bit of color line fine and bring up the edges. Now I can see that the computer is finding these edges okay, but there are all these extra edges that it's finding in the wood grains that I really don't need. So let's bring up the simplify edge and the reduce weak to throw away all these extra details. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm going to stay with it the way it is here right now. Okay, so here is our edges image, here is our base image, and here is the combined image there. Now, you, you might be wondering why I chose to introduce some edges into this photo also. Well, if I look just at the base image alone, you could see that um, there was a lot of these smaller line details that had been taken away just by using the Simplify base image. Now, when we look at the Edges tab, it allowed us to actually reintroduce some of these edges. In fact, I'm going to start creeping in here just a few other edges there, just like that, and I'll also weaken the effect in general. And when you combine uh, the base image along with these edges, okay, you're going to get this really beautiful uh, watercolor-like effect. And it's mainly like a watercolor because traditionally with watercolor, you have the edges of the brush strokes getting darker. And that's exactly the f effect that I want to create. After we've made these modifications, I think we're pretty much done with this fall image. So I'm going to hit OK. And ta-da! There's our final image, and uh, let's take a look at that full screen here for you. There you go. The stunning work of art that we created in a matter of minutes using Topaz Simplify.
So that concludes the demonstration of Topaz Simplify. Now, uh, I urge you to find out more about Topaz Labs products by visiting our website at www.topazlabs.com. When you visit topazlabs.com, you'll find even more information about Topaz Labs products. And make sure that you visit our uh, Topaz Simplify page. You will see here some of the other pieces of art that have been created by our users. As well as when you scroll all the way to the bottom of the page, make sure you click on our Topaz Simplify group on Flickr. Here you're going to find uh, many, many more images that have been created by our users. And these are the kind of images that are going to really inspire you to dive further and further into Topaz Simplify. I hope you, you have enjoyed this demonstration and tutorial, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.